this one is uh, very particular because it's actually lead, led by women themselves. Uh, so it's kind of a feminist revolution. I would say it's the first feminist revolution of the Middle East somehow. Dear friends, welcome to another edition of Forum 2000 Online Chat. My name is Arzu Gebula, and joining us today is Ramin Jahan Begu, a political philosopher um, and at present the executive director of the Mahatma Gandhi Center for Nonviolence and Peace Studies at, and the Vice Dean of the School of Law at Jinnah Global University in Delhi, India. His work in promoting dialogue between cultures and his advocacy for nonviolence has won him the Peace Prize from the UN Association in Spain in 2009. He's also a member of the advisory board of Penn Canada. And finally, he's the author of 29 books published in various languages, including English, French, Spanish, Italian, and Persian. Today, we will be talking about Iran, specifically addressing quite an extensive question. Is it the beginning of the end of the Ayatollahs? Welcome to the online chat once again, I mean, if I may. It is great to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. Hello. But, I mean, you said after the recent protests in Iran that for the first time in its history, the Islamic Republic of Iran is encountering tough resistance from citizens inside and outside of the country. Can we say that after 40 years of subjugation and repression, the Iranian regime seems weaker and Iranian citizens stronger? Specifically, we're seeing women who have the driving force behind these protests. But there's also been violent response from the state. Just yesterday, there was a report of Hamed Salashur, a 23-year-old taxi driver, whose family was informed he died of the heart attack four days after his disappearance, and yet his body showed shocking signs of torture. He has become yet another victim. According to the human rights activist news agency, at least 502 protesters have been killed since the start of the protests. And more than 18,000 protesters have been arrested. There have been executions. Can we actually say that this is this, that this uprising is indeed the beginning of the end for the Ayatollahs? Perhaps we could start by um, discussing the actual um, movement itself who is in it and uh, what is driving it and what are we seeing? Yes, thank you. Uh, and thank you for this invitation. Uh, I, I, I think I can start by saying that uh, most of the people uh, who do not have a very profound knowledge of Iranian politics, uh, they should know that um, uh, for the past 44 years of the Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, there has been a lot of protests and there has there's been a lot of repression and violence going on. So what we are, are witnessing right now in Iran is nothing new. Uh, actually, it has been going practically every five years. We have had protests uh, since 1979. And um, I have to mention and underline the fact that the first um, uh, demonstration, which was uh, against the Islamic Republic of Iran on March 8, 1979, it was by women. And it was against the hijab, it was against the veil. So uh, women were already in the forerunners of uh, fighting for uh, freedom and fighting for, uh, you know, against the hijab and fighting for their uh, negative liberties. And uh, uh, they were fighting for the public space. And this has been going on and on. But uh, we have been going through a lot of uh, different demonstrations like in 1999 with the students, 2009 the Green Movement, then 2017 and 18 the urban protests. Uh, this one is uh, very particular because it's actually lead, led by women themselves. Uh, so it's kind of a feminist revolution. I would say it's the first feminist revolution of the Middle East somehow. And uh, secondly, it's also participated, uh, fully participated by young, very young people and some most of many, many minors. And that's why among the 500 who have been killed until now in the past four months, we see a lot of people under the age of 18, uh, at least something like 60 people under the age of 18 have been killed by the Iranian regime. And uh, many women, uh, young women have been killed 
and or been jailed actually. So uh, it's a, it's a very particular uh, movement which um, has. Uh, unlike the other ones, has put completely into a legitimacy crisis the Iranian theocracy. So, yes, I do believe that because of this uh, profound legitimacy crisis and the fact that uh, you ha we have a new generation of people who have been living uh, through the, um, the Internet, I, I mean, that they discovered a, a parallel world through the Internet, and they are, um, I would say, their the mode of being and their sense of being is completely different from the the dusty old conservative uh, Iranian regime which is represented by the Ayatollahs. Thank you so much for explaining this um, complex but also very um, um, interesting history behind um, movements in, in Iran. Um, I guess my follow-up question to that is um, this is a very different um, protest, as you said. It's, a, it's an uprising. It's, it's a feminist revolution. Um, the repression s seems also very different. It's, it's far more aggressive. It's mar far more violent. And in some cases, um, we're seeing that people are um, afraid uh, to continue the protest. So I guess the follow-up question to that is that how um, is the movement... Um, can continue existing within such an aggressive and violent state of uh, crackdown against them? And can they be, uh, can they continue um, demanding uh, their asks and, and, and what they want from, from the Iranian regime? Yeah, there are two aspects to your question. One is about the violence of the Iranian regime, which I think that it has always been violent. Uh, this is a regime which has killed something like 30,000 people in prison in the 1980s. Uh, this is a regime which has uh, always, in every protest, has shot on people and put them in jail. So uh, violence is nothing new. In this uh, sense, uh, what is new in, in, in these protests is that they have been killing a lot of children. Uh, and uh, this is very, very new because we never had minors and under people under the age of 18 coming and uh, the demonstrating against the Iranian regime. Um, and that has to do with the fact that the regime itself is very fearful from these young people because they are not fearful at all. Uh, and and they, they, they're living in new, as, as I said, they're, they're living in new uh, mode of uh, social contract, which has nothing to do uh, since they don't have any knowledge of the Iranian revolution and what happened uh, 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago. Uh, for them, is just living their lives. And, and this is what the Iranian regime doesn't understand. Now, um, uh, the Iranian regime, I think, is in a very bad position uh, for the first time in its uh, political life. Uh, first of all, because it doesn't know how to handle these young women and these uh, uh, these young people, actually, in general, these minors. And secondly, uh, by putting them in jail, and we have something like 18,000 uh, prisoners right now after four months of uh, demonstration, uh, they go on with their violence and they go on, and, they, and but they try to hit this violence by saying, you know, these people have been... Uh, to, uh, they, they, they they committed suicide, or uh, we don't know how they got killed. So it's uh, it doesn't want it. It ha it's uh, it has I think a kind of a fear of being uh, incriminated internationally and nationally. And I think that um, the point that we have to make is that if this is the first time that I think that uh, uh, every form of consent has been uh, taken away from the Iranian people uh, in regard to this regime. And this regime is completely isolated internationally. So uh, it's very, very important to understand that. So does that actually mean that it is the end? for this regime or are, are we should we anticipate something else what other scenarios are there uh, perhaps you could elaborate a little bit on that i think it's uh, it's the beginning of the end uh because uh, because of the crisis of legitimacy uh, both nationally and internationally and uh, i have to mention what i did not mention which is very important and that's uh, kind of a um, uh, the fact that 
these protests have been ethnically and economically actually uh, driven uh, by different populations. You have the Kurds, you have the Baluchis, you have people from the south of Iran, but at the same time, you have people from all walks of life. Uh, so it's very, very important. Uh, now, um, I, I believe uh, we uh, uh, and 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 the Iranians outside the Iranian diaspora, which is around something like, like the twelve million Iranians living abroad, uh, mostly professionals, they are also um, following uh, exact very closely what's going happening, and uh, they have, have they they're showing their solidarity. I think uh, um, uh, Iranians in general they are they think that uh, and they believe that the world has to support them. Uh, against the Iranian regime as they supported um, South Africa, for example, the apartheid regime, uh, you know, they, as they supported the fight against the apartheid regime. Because, uh, uh, and, and this is what I called our South African, uh, you know, period. Uh, we, are, we are living in a, in a time of um, fighting, like fighting the apartheid. This is a sexual apartheid. Uh, uh, and, and if we don't have this support, uh, the Iranian regime, is not going to be, I mean, it's not going to be punished. So uh, it's very, very important how uh, the world via will react to, and uh, the world has been reacting quite well until now, which is very hopeful and it's uh, also very astonishing, I think, uh, because after 40 years that the world actually closed its eyes on what's happening in Iran and all these violations of human rights. For the first time, you see that at the level of the United Nations, the human rights organizations, and, and, and ordinary people around the world, they have been showing a lot of solidarity. And I think that's very, very important uh, for all of us. Thank you. I actually wanted to ask you about the international response, but you actually briefly touched upon um, in your in your room. Um, intervention specifically, I think this is this is also my, my last question, but specifically, how do you see um, the policy um, and, and and sort of the politics from the international community actually have an impact um, on the regime in Iran, whether it's UN resolutions, whether there are some um, other specific steps, sanctions, um, what and can these um, decisions and, 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 and signs actually have an effect and sort of help the movement in a way from the outside to achieve its um, potential goal, eventual goal? Yeah, I think if the sanctions and the boycotts and the punishments are from the United Nations, especially, if they are well driven, they, if they are not just, you know, fluid and uh, just uh, passing through, uh, they they can they can have a very good uh, results. I, I think they can have very good results. And it's very important to, to have them, actually, because uh, for a long period of time, for example, we I, I was really expecting that at the level of the Qatar Soccer uh, World Cup, uh, Iran would be punished uh, in the same way that South Africa was punished during the Olympic Games in the 1980s, for example, or 70s. Uh, but this did not happen at all. <clears throat> and uh, I think that was a that was a great mistake. But the fact that uh, in the ECOSOC, um, uh, the Commission on the Violation Against Women, uh, Violence Against Women, actually uh, that uh, asked Iran to leave the, the Commission. That, I think, it was a good step forward. Uh, but we, we need many more steps, uh, you know, because, um, you know, for example, uh, Iran has not accepted uh, an, an, a commission to go and from the United Nations, uh, a truth commission, to, to go and visit Iran. And they said, we're not going to let them in. Well, I mean, if, if they if they have the power of uh, actually don't letting people inside Iran, I mean, this is not going to be good. So. Uh, it's very important to have the solidarity of the world with the Iranian people. Otherwise, uh, the the struggle for uh, you know human rights in Iran will not uh, accomplish anything. I think that's very very important to understand. Absolutely, I mean we also saw the athletes being uh, barred from uh, athletes from Russia being barred from um, competitions when when Russia invaded uh, Ukraine. Uh, so these this 
could have happened in the case of Iran, as, as you said, but it, but it didn't. Um, I would really like to continue talking with you about what is happening and various scenarios of how this could all, but unfortunately we're short on time. So I would like to wrap up and perhaps, um, you know, it's, it's the, the, the uprising in Iran is happening at the same time as so many other world crises. Uh, we have the war in Ukraine. Uh, we have, uh, post pandemic. We, we, we still don't know, um, where we are headed to. Um, but I really, um, value what you said about the solidarity because, um, in this day and age, this seems to be, uh, very valuable to express solidarity, not only on the human level, but on an international sort of level, uh, to keep showing people that everyone is there for each other. Um, thank you so much. I mean, for joining Forum 2000 online chat. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and wisdom with us. Um, and I look forward to seeing you at the next gathering. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arzu.